Hey, it's Steve Lindsley. Welcome back to my shop. Whether you call it mission, arts and craft, or just plain stickly, you got to agree that this type of furniture and furnishings appeals to a wide audience. I was inspired to make this, this clock by an article I saw in an, in an old craftsman magazine, and I'll give you some more information about that in a minute. Um, the material is white oak, uh, quarter sawn white oak, which was the wood of choice for Mr. Stickley. Uh, the finish, I tried to replicate a fumed, ammonia fumed finish, which would have been also the finish of choice mainly for Mr. Stickley, but I used a combination of dyes and uh, kind of got that, I think at least, that um, fumed uh, look. I didn't, I could have got some ammonia and fumed the, fumed the clock because it's not that big of a project, but I just didn't feel like messing with it. Then you got to deal with the ammonia afterwards and things like that. So I, I replicated it using some dye. So let me uh, take a minute and uh, I'll show you where I got the inspiration for this piece. From October 1901 to December 1916, Gustav Stickley edited and published a magazine called The Craftsman. The Craftsman covered a wide range of topics uh, and articles, but it, a lot of it revolved around the craftsman lifestyle, which he was so very fond of. Of course, these magazines are long since out of print. They're difficult to find, if not impossible. But thanks to educational institutions like the University of Wisconsin, they've archived these online and made them available to us, those of us that would like to uh, read Mr. Stickley's writings and, and to study some of the projects that he included in these magazines. So I'll put, I'll put a uh, link in the comments to where I found the uh, Craftsman magazines online. In March of 1905, Gustav Stickley uh, began a series of articles he called Home Training and Cabinet Work, Practical Examples of Structural Woodworking. Uh, the very first article uh, contained uh, several projects which were fairly simple and included a birdhouse, a doghouse, a couple of child's chairs, and a uh, medicine cabinet. Uh, he continued this um, series for a total of 30 issues until it stopped in October of 1907. In this article, you, which was from the December of 1905, uh, you can see that the first project that he included was a fireplace mantle. The second project in this December 1905 issue was a little bit more challenging, and it was a uh, was a hall clock. The final projects in that issue were a couple of clocks. One was the mantle clock, which I was very interested in and is the subject of this uh, video. The other one was a wall clock, which is nice, but not something I'd be interested in building, at least at this point. Um, so that was that's how I found the project that I wanted to make for this video. Also included in the article was the drawing with dimensions. Uh, there was a scale that was very helpful, and from this I was able to get the angles that I needed and the uh, uh, dimensions of the pieces. So it was very helpful during the construction of this project. Well, that's where I got the inspiration and the, uh, the general guidelines to build this, this clock. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you how I uh, made this piece. I hope you enjoy the video. Quarter sawn white oak is the traditional wood for mission style furniture and furnishings, so that's what I'm using for this project. I had a one by five quarter by six by ten foot that needed to be cut into lengths and then face jointed. Once we got that completed, I went to the joiner and straightened an edge, uh, and then went to the planer and made the two sides parallel. So that I pretty much did that with every piece that I used in this project. After I finished up with the planer, I run them through the uh, drum sander. Uh, my older planer gives a lot of snipe, uh, so I use the drum sander to clean that up and bring the parts to the finished uh, thickness. The, the front of the uh, clock is only 3 eighths of an inch in thickness, so since I was using 5 quarter stock, I thought I'd go ahead and resaw the, uh, resaw the front piece and then I can uh, join them together and get the 
uh, width of the piece that I need. Uh, the board wasn't wide enough for uh, uh, the front without a glue up. So that's what I'm doing here, just resawing the front and I did the same thing to the back. Well, here's the front panel of the clock. Uh, this is the one that I resawed in half. Uh, I've gone ahead and glued it together and I marked the center line, which is the glue joint. So I got a, a nice tight glue joint there so you really can't tell the, where it was joined. So that's good. Uh, I went ahead and uh, made a template uh, out of some scrap MDF. Uh, I've cut a circle the size that um, I want the clock face to be. Uh, and then down here in the bottom is where I cut out for the tile that we're going to use this uh, it says four by four but it's actually a little less than that it's like three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths so I've cut an opening there so that it would just fit down in inside there so of course the piece is a lot thinner so it wouldn't be way down but um, we got that on there so the thing we want to do and on my my template I got a center line marked on it and it's been cut to the shape that I want uh, so what we're just going to do is we're going to take and put the uh, the template on our piece and line up the center lines with the bottom and with the top and once we get those lined up we can go ahead and mark the uh, mark the sides my plan plan is to um, just uh, on the side cuts I'll just rough it out on the bandsaw and then um, we're going to stick the template to the piece with some double stick tape and then use a router and a flush trim bit to clean up the inside of this and ins inside there and then and clean up the outside so let's take our pencil and we mark the uh, mark the outside there and we'll go ahead and mark our circle uh, I'm gonna have to remove some of the waste what I'll use is a, I'll use a jigsaw to remove uh, the most of the waste on the inside of these two pieces um, and inside of here before I do that though, the, the tile has somewhat curved edges, so I, I, I'm thinking what I'm going to do instead of making that just like a, a sharp corner there, I think I'll take a quarter inch drill bit and drill down and drill out the corner so that it has a little bit of a radius on it. Um, so now that we got the now that we got the pieces marked on there, I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to the bandsaw and cut these outside edges off, and then we'll um, uh, think about sticking the uh, sticking the template to the piece. the front stuck to the template with some double stick tape and I'm using a flush trimming bit to clean this up but this particular bearing has or this particular bit has a uh, bearing on top and the bottom uh, I'm using the bottom uh, bearing to, uh, since I have the template on the bottom so it's just a matter of cleaning those up it did take a little bit of chisel work on the uh, area for the tile I couldn't really get into the corners uh, all that well so I just cleaned it up with the chisel After cleaning up the front piece, it was off to the table saw. I have the dado stack and we're going to cut a couple of rabbits on the inside of the front piece. Uh, the rabbit needs to be three quarter inch wide to uh, accommodate the size of the, of the side pieces. 
I actually took a couple of setups to get it to that width, but it was pretty much the same for uh, both setups. Here's the side pieces. I'm just trimming them to width. Uh, they're longer than they need to be at this point, but we'll uh, trim them to length a little bit later. Here's our two sides. Uh, I finished cutting them to, to width. Uh, to, they're the final width. I've cleaned up the edges on the joiner so we get a nice smooth edge. Uh, this is the side that go, gets going to get glued into the rabbit on the front. What I've done is I made a cabinet maker's triangle. It's probably difficult to see here, but it's right there. Basically, I want this to be the front. I want this to be the point towards the top. So uh, that's how they're going to uh, go into the clock. Problem is that they, they're not going to meet the clock at exactly at a right angle. Uh, because of the angle on the side of our piece here, um, the, ang the cut at the top and the bottom of this needs to be um, at an angle so that it, it'll sit flat on the base. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this on here, if you can see that there. I'm just going to put this on here and I'm going to scribe a line across the bottom. And without moving it, I'm going to scribe a line across the top. And from that, we should be able to determine what our, what our angle is. So uh, I got a little protractor here. So what I did was I set it. And if I bring it up to the, to the line, that shows me that our angle is 2 degrees. So like I said, it's not much of an angle, but it's enough that if we don't uh, account for it when we go to glue these together, then the board's not going to. There's going to be a gap at the bottom and at the top. So, uh, so we need to when we make these cuts, we need to make sure that we set our uh, saw blade at two degrees, and the cuts will be a parallel cut. So I do is just make an exaggerated line there, so I know that it goes in that direction, and the one at the bottom here will go in this direction, so that when I'm putting them on the saw, I got a better idea of uh, which is which way it goes, because the the two degree angle there's really not a lot of can't really tell much difference there so uh, so now that we got those marked and we know what we need to do we'll take them over to the saw set the saw blade at two degrees and make these cuts well with the saw blade tilted to where it needs to be I'm just going to go ahead and trim one into each of these side pieces With one end cut at the proper angle, I'm just going to go ahead and use my marking knife and mark both uh, sides to the proper length. After making sure I had the uh, board going in the right direction for the angle we're cutting, I went ahead and trimmed each end of those uh, sides to proper length. And then it was time to make a rabbit so for the back, so we just went ahead and used the dado stack and cut a rabbit in the back of each one. To stick the clock face to the plywood, I'm using some spray adhesive, as you can see there. I wanted a really good bond between the two, so I used a little bit stronger adhesive than I normally use. And then I just rubbed it out with a J-roller to get a good bond between the two. To trim the excess plywood off the face, I just used a bandsaw and followed the edge of the uh, clock face around to trim that off. Before I went any further, I wanted to round over the uh, area for the tile and the, the clock face uh, area with a 1 8 inch round over bit. I have the tile uh, just fit into the front uh, piece here and, and you probably can't see it too well, but it, it actually sticks up quite a bit from the, from the surface of the front. So if I was just to glue a piece of plywood or something on the back, this thing would be sticking out way too much, uh, and I don't like that. Um, so what I did was I, I figured out that it's about 3 16th of an inch bigger than it needs to be, so I, 
I made a couple of little spacers. So if I put those in there, and then when I drop that on there, the it's a little bit proud of the front, but not much, and the corners are pretty much flush. It's the handmade piece of tile, so it's you know it's it's irregular and it's not perfectly flat and whatever. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take these two pieces and we're going to glue them to the back of the glue them and and uh, put them in the back of here and then the back of this piece and then we'll cut a piece of plywood and put across there. Then when I go to put this uh, piece in there, it'll it'll set where I want it. Um, I'm going to use some kind of silicone something or other to, to glue that in there, but that's for a later a later time. So the thing we need to do is put a little bit of glue on these and just a little bit is what we need. Just something to hold it on there. So I'll put those there. I got my combination square set for where I want it. So if I put that on there and push it up, I get my combination. I get it where I want it to be. I put a little, this just a little bit um, offset from the inside of the piece, inside of the hole there, and we'll just put a couple of pins in there to hold it. Probably wouldn't need to do that, but it'll hold it on there while the glue's drying. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, now that I got that on there, I can take a measurement for the piece of plywood and then we can, we can go to table saw and cut that and that looks like it's just a little over, it's about five and uh, nine sixteenths. So we'll go ahead and cut that and then we can glue that on there. Plywood's cut this size, so we're gonna go ahead and attach it. I just put on a little bit of glue uh, and then we'll uh, fasten it down with some pin nails and then when I turn the uh, piece over and put the tile in, it comes out exactly where I wanted it to be. I need to trim the dial. So I, I, what I did, I drew a center line on the, uh, on the piece with my combination square. And then I marked the center of the 6 and the 12. Once I line those center lines up, then clock will be, face will be straight up and down. And once I did that, I can just take my marking knife and mark the edges and draw that out. Uh, scratch it with a marking knife and put a little pencil line on it and then we can go ahead and trim those extra pieces off. Time to glue up the case. I'm just using some regular tight bond. I don't want to put too much on because I don't want to have to deal with the squeeze out. So that's a long grain to long grain joint so it's going to be nice and strong. Uh, I put the sides on. I found the best way to clamp it was to use a couple of uh, band clamps. I cut a spacer for the back just to hold everything square. Uh, so I put the band clamps on and a couple of quick clamps in the center part to uh, make sure everything squeezed together and uh, everything was square and it worked out really well. After the case dried, I put the back piece on and marked it for width at the top and the bottom. Connected the two dots and then just took it to the uh, band saw and cut off the extra pieces. After trimming it at the band saw, I took it to the oscillating sander and just sanded the, the back down to the line. Uh, and then I just kept fitting it so I got a nice loose fit. Not real loose, but loose enough that it, the uh, back goes in and out without any, uh, without any problem. It's time to round over some edges here. So I got the bottom at the router table and I'm using a quarter inch round over bit to uh, round that over a couple of passes and uh, it takes care of that. And then I needed to round over the uh, the edge, um, kind of hide the joint between the front and the side, so I'm using a 3 16 inch round over bit and a trim router to take care of that uh, that edge, so it worked out really well. Uh, 
Well, the top piece wasn't quite as easy as just taking it to the router. So uh, based on the drawing, I determined that the, uh, the angle or the bevel is 35 degrees on the uh, three sides of the top piece. So here I'm just taking it to the table saw and I got the, I got the blade tilted to 35 degrees. Here I just put a little block on the, the back that's going to ride on top of the fence to help me hold this uh, piece steady as I push it through the blade. So uh, start the saw up there and uh, use a push stick and hold everything tight to the, tight to the fence and uh, cut three sides of this piece. Well, it's time to put some finish on our piece. Uh, I'm going, I wanted it to be a, a mission style finish, uh, similar to what Mr. Stickley would use, but Mr. Stickley fumed his um, pieces with ammonia, and I didn't feel like messing with the ammonia and all the other stuff that goes along with it and dealing with that. So uh, I followed a recipe by Charles Neal, who's a woodworker in Virginia and does a lot of finishing, and I, I really uh, enjoy what he does and learned a lot from him. So. He makes a, up a mixture of, of dyes, and that's what I'm going to use to dye this, dye this piece. Uh, it starts with one and a half uh, parts of this general finish is medium brown. Uh, to that, you add three quarters of a part of uh, this green, uh, and then four parts of water. So that's what, I, uh, that's what I mixed up, and this is what my test board, I did a test to see what it would look like. Uh, you probably can't see it too well, but it, this side is um, uh, the original, the original uh, mixture. Uh, and then what I did is I put some garnet shellac on it, and I sprayed it with some lacquer. This side is basically the same thing. Uh, this side I used a one-pound cut of garnet shellac. On this side I used a two-pound, but it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, this came out to me was a little too green. Um, so what I did was I, I added a little bit more brown to it to get it to come out to the color I want, which was, I, and I did another piece, which was this piece here, which you probably can't see, but it's, it's got the similar color, but it's a little, a little less um, green, I guess, a little more brown. Uh, so that's the mixture we're going to use. Um, we're going to get set up and um, start to dye this piece. We'll start with, the, start with something easy, the back. Um, we'll do that first. Uh, and that'll be uh, get us in the get us in the swing of uh, <laughs> dyeing these things. So uh, the the key to dyeing it is to uh, put it on quickly and then to you know get it off uh, quickly as well. So there's no dawdling when you're when you're doing the dyeing. So uh, let me get set up and we're going to go ahead and uh, dye this piece. After the dye had time to dry, I'm, I, I wiped, wiped on some garnet shellac. I'm just using a one pound cut and putting it on with a, uh, a lint free rag. It, it kind of warms the piece up a little bit and seals the dye and, and before we get ready to spray on some lacquer. Now that the shellac is dried, we're going to go ahead and spray on some uh, lacquer. As you can see, I'm using a Minwax product. It's a satin uh, 
finish. Uh, I prefer depth, but that's hard to come by, at least where I live. You used to be able to get it at the big box store, but you can't do that anymore. At this point, I'm going to spray on three coats of the Minwax, which I said is a, it's a, it, it's a good product. It lays out nice, dries fast, so it worked out pretty well. After the third coat of lacquer dried, I, I scuffed sanded the piece with some 320 uh, grit sandpaper. And now I'm going to glaze it, which basically just means I'm going to take some of the dye that I used to dye it and wipe it over the lacquer that I've put on it already. Uh, I think it, it livens up the piece. It gives it a little bit more depth of color, I think. Uh, uh, it really doesn't take that much extra. And it dries pretty fast. And then, and then we'll seal it up with a... Uh, couple more coats of lacquer after that after the glaze is dried and this piece will be ready to go. I'm not sure Gustav Stickley would have been that thrilled about using pocket screws but <laughs> Uh, the thought of uh, screwing through the top and the bottom to screw them onto the, the piece was uh, more than I could stand to do. So I'm, I used pocket screws to, to put the top and the bottom onto the, uh, onto the case. It, it worked out really well. Well, it's time to put the movement on our clock face. I'm going to do it now before I put the clock face in the... Uh, into the clock, I think it'll be a little bit easier to to uh, get it together. Um, this is just a quartz movement that I got from the clock kit company. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive, but uh, it just takes one double A battery, so that's what we're going to use for this clock. Uh, the takes a five sixteenths inch hole, which I've drilled into the front of the clock face. Uh, the, this gasket, <coughs> this gasket goes on to little rubber gasket goes on there and what I found was if I put that on there and when I put tried to put the clock face or the movement through the clock the the quarter inch Baltic birch plywood is a little too thick I couldn't get the brass screw uh, nut to go on uh, so what I did was I drilled a little relief hole in the back um, I think if I was to do this again I'd probably maybe switch to a, a thinner piece of plywood maybe a three sixteenths or an eighth inch or something so so anyway this this just goes on here we'll make sure we got it up the way it's supposed to go and there we go that goes on there like that and then there's a brass washer that goes on and then a brass nut holds that on there so let's see and that just gets tightened on there. So we'll make sure that we're somewhat square here on the back. And then I'm just going to snug that up. It doesn't need to be, uh, don't need to force it, just needs to be tightened up so that the, the movement's tight to the back there. So that's all we need to do with that. I got a couple of different hands here. The uh, this is, these are the ones I'm going to use, kind of a traditional uh, arts and craft kind of clock hand. So the instructions say to put the minute hand on, and if I can get it on there. There's a flat spot on the, uh, there we go. And you get the minute hand on and you turn it so that it's at the 12 o'clock position which we got then there. And this hand's way too, is too long, so I can trim it off. So once you get that at 12 o'clock, then th this, the hour hand is just a press fit onto this, uh, onto here. So you line it up with a, one of the numbers, and we're going to use a nine. And I may have to tweak this a little bit once I uh, get it on there. So let's put this on here and see how much we need to cut off. And then it's just got a brass screw, that brass nut that goes on. Uh, that You could put a second hand on here. I, I opted not to do that. So 
Mine's not going to have a second hand. You just put that finger tight. And there we go. We're at set for 9 o'clock. I said this is too long, so I'm going to need to trim that down a little bit. So I'm going to take it off. And let's see about where we want to. I'll take the nut off, and then we'll just trim that off. These hands you can either put on either way. You can put them on this way, or they're actually white on the other side. You could put them on that way if you wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. So if we put that on there and just kind of hold it on there, we'll see where we want. And we want it about, I want it about even with the top of the time ring. So that would be right about there. So I'm just going to do that. And we just take a little pair of nippers and nip that off. And then just file it a little bit. And then we'll touch it up with a marker to so we don't see any exposed uh, metal there. And we'll put that back on there. Get the brass nut started straight. So to adjust the time, there's a little wheel on the back, so if we spin it around, the hour hand should be at 10 when we get around there. If it's not, we'll need to make a little bit of an adjustment. Alright, so that reached 10 o'clock, so that's looking good. Alright, so that's all we're going to do with that, so it's ready to go into the, uh, the body of the clock. I lined up my center marks on the face and in the inside of the case and then adjusted, the, uh, adjusted it right and left till I got an equal reveal all the way around and I attached it with some pins. Just going to use some silicone that I got at the big box store. I'm just putting some dabs on the back of the piece and then we'll just uh, push it into the uh, to the pocket there and then that'll hold it in there and uh, give it a chance to move around if should it decide it needed to do that. To hold the back on, I'm just using some cup washers that I've screwed into the back of the rabbit. And then in the back of the, in the, in the back, I actually have some rare earth magnets, so it fits on there pretty nice and holds it in place. Well, that's how I made my stickly clock. I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed the video. Um, in fact, I liked the clock so much that I went ahead and made a second one while I was making the first one. Uh, this one is a little bit different finish, obviously. Uh, it's still quarter sawn white oak. Uh, the different tile, the clock face, and, and uh, movement and stuff are all the same as the other piece. Uh, this particular finish uh, fits in better with my home furnishings than the other one did. So uh, they, they were both a lot of fun to make. Uh, they're really not that difficult, uh, uh, but they are certainly uh, they certainly are worth the effort if you decide to make one for yourself. So. Uh, I'll put some pictures up at the uh, after the uh, at the end of the video here, and maybe a little bit more about where you can learn more about uh, Stickley Furniture and the Craftsman Magazine and Mr. Stickley's life in general. So, uh, thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe.
Located in Morris Plains, New Jersey, Craftsman Farms was the home of Gustav Stickley and his family until 1915. At that time, he uh, had to file for bankruptcy after having several years of bad financial results, and his family, the family uh, home and property was sold to a, another family. In uh, 1989, the property and the buildings were acquired by the Craftsman Farm Foundation, which operates the building and the site as a uh, museum and tribute to Gustav Stickley and the Craftsman style of living and furniture. Uh, if you find yourself in northern New Jersey and uh, are interested in Stickley type furniture, mission furniture, and would like to see where Mr. S Gustav Stickley and his family lived, please take a trip to uh, Craftsman's Farms. It's definitely worth your while. Uh, I was there on a nice fall day and it was really a, a beautiful uh, grounds and uh, the folks there are real friendly and happy to give you a tour of the home and it, which includes many uh, original stickly pieces. So uh, if you have a chance, put that on your list of places to visit.